We are welcomed by uh, Nikki Haley, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. Good morning, you, Ambassador. And Governor of South Carolina. And Governor, in, <laughs> indeed. Good Go morning. It's great Good to morning. be back in studio. Uh, you know, uh, you, you have a unique point of view because you've been over at the United Nations and you know how all of this stuff works. Right now, you know, they're, they're bearing down on Mr. Zelensky. Uh, Vladimir Putin wants him dead or wants him at a table signing a peace agreement. That's the last thing he wants to do. Well, and I think you have to look at Putin's um, track record. I mean, he's killed political opponents in England, or tried to. He has allowed chemical weapons on mothers and children in Syria. I mean, this guy, he brought down the Malaysian airplane. When he says that he's going after someone, he's going after someone. And Zelensky's life is very much in danger at this point. But Putin's feeling desperate. He's feeling desperate because what he, he never expected the resistance and the spirit of the Ukrainian people. The Russian people don't have that same spirit. They've got courage if they're out there protesting. But even the military, they didn't sign up for war. They thought they were going to training. Yes. They never knew that he was putting them in war. That's what was chilling. Last week we played the text messages. The One of the ambassadors to the UN was reading a text message from one of the soldiers, Russian soldiers, to his mom saying, Mom, we thought we were coming here for training. I didn't know this. People are putting themselves, their bodies in front of our tanks, and uh, we are having to kill civilians. They didn't realize what they were doing. Did Putin send the wrong message? Do you think he was just pushing the soldiers in there and they had no idea why they were going to Ukraine? I think he was arrogant. I think he was arrogant. He knew what he wanted. He pushed them in. He figured that they would listen to him. I don't think he ever thought he'd see this kind of resistance. And honestly, even the Russian soldiers, when they see how inspiring the Ukrainian people are, that they'll even yell at the soldiers as they're coming in, even if they don't have ammunition or that they're taking, you know, arms for themselves to go after and defend their country. I mean, it's a fantastic thing to watch. And so, you know, none of them want to see bloodshed. None of them. And if you look, the Russian people never wanted to go to war in the first place. Right. Russians didn't. Ukrainians said, what, what's going on here? How did this happen? We don't even know what happened in 2014. Here's the president addressing a conflict. He is not putting American troops in. Watch. Russia's Vladimir Putin sought to shake the very foundations of the free world, thinking he could make it bend to his menacing ways. But he badly miscalculated. He thought he could roll into Ukraine and the world would roll over. Instead, he met with a wall of strength he never anticipated or imagined. He met the Ukrainian people. <laughs> he thought he could divide us at home, in this chamber, in this nation. He thought he could divide us in Europe as well. But Putin was wrong. We are ready. We are united, and that's what we did. We stayed united. Putin is now isolated from the world more than he has ever been. We're cutting off Russia's largest banks in the international financial system, preventing Russia's central bank from defending the Russian ruble, ruble, making Putin's $630 billion war fund worthless. We're choking Russia's access. We're choking Russia's access to technology that will sap its economic strength and weaken its military for years to come. Your reaction to what he's doing? It's bizarre. First of all, he kind of talks about it like the war is over. You know, like he's, it's, he's doing a victory lap. The second thing is he hasn't even done everything he should be doing. Until he sanctions Russian energy, until he stops taking Russian oil into America, which is unthinkable that we would take that in from an enemy, until he goes and fully pulls out and has Russia pulled out of SWIFT, the international banking system, he hasn't done enough. And to go and sit there and act like they've led the West, right. they didn't lead the West. Biden was following the Europeans. When you're following the Europeans who love to hug it out, that's not saying very much. Yeah, but Ambassador, on top of that, what, what's happening right now is that the Russians are on course to annihilate and take out and level two major cities, Kharkiv and Kyiv, right now. So for you to sit there and to me take a bow about what they've done on the outside to me is, is unconscionable. It's disgusting and the fact is there's going to be a lot of bloodshed on the streets. I mean we know that Russia is going to end up taking over one or two cities. The thing is the people it doesn't matter who he puts into government 
the Ukrainians are never going to go for it. So in the end, he's not right. going to win. But we should be doing everything but to... But he's carving up a country. He absolutely is carving up a country, and that's why we should give maximum pressure against Putin. We shouldn't give him any breathing room. And the idea that Biden would exempt energy companies, honestly, I can't comprehend that. Well, when you think about it, uh, right now, he's spending about $15 billion a day, they are estimating, on this war. We're giving him about a billion dollars a day to fund the war by buying his gas. But if Joe Biden cut off the entire supply of Russian oil, our gas here in this country would go up. And we're in an election year, as you know, and the last down. thing he wants is for the voters to go into the polling stations the first Tuesday in November thinking, you know, uh, five fifty a gallon of, of gas. Uh, thanks, Joe Biden. Why didn't you open up the Keystone? But you know, this whole year he's tried to buy off votes. He's tried to buy every American, but it's not going to work. Listening to that State of the Union address, it was fascinating that he sat there and talked about how COVID shouldn't divide us. But this is the same man that talked about the fact that there was a pandemic of the unvaccinated. He talked about the fact that we need to fix the border. This is the same president who broke and pulled back all of the Trump policy and now wants to talk about amnesty. He talked about the fact that we should fund the police. It was his party that wanted to defund the police and he did nothing to stop it. And we've got crime at its worst. This is the same man who said he blamed Republican tax cuts on why the economy is the way it is. Yeah. And he has a spending obsession and he's sitting there talking about more and more spending, and he's not ever even looking to what he's done with all of that. And then you talk about Ukraine, and he's trying to do a victory lap. Americans see this for what it is. He can do and say whatever he wants. Americans aren't stupid. He needs to quit treating them like they are. Yeah, and he also said, buy American, yet we're not producing oil here anymore. He closed down Keystone Pipeline. We are now dependent, even though we were independent when you were the ambassador, and now we're buying from Russia. He talked about COVID. You touched on this a little bit. We've experienced lockdowns and mandates and masks. We ran out of the testing. We ran out of monoclonals. Doctors couldn't get those during Christmas time when Omicron was rampant. No antivirals. But then he said last night, freedom. He said freedom is always, will always triumph over for tyranny. Listen to this. Last year, COVID-19 kept us apart. This year, we're finally together again. Tonight, <laughs> tonight we meet as Democrats, Republicans, Independents, but most importantly, as Americans, with the duty to one another, to America, to the American people, to the Constitution and an unwavering resolve that freedom will always triumph over tyranny. Let's use this moment to reset. So stop looking at COVID as a partisan dividing line. The vast majority of federal workers will once again work in person. Our schools are open. Let's keep it that way. Our kids need to be in school. <clears throat> had him take off the mask in the day of the State of the Union. That's what the science said. I mean, this is so hypocritical. He's acting like he's the one that brought freedom to America. No, the polls brought freedom to America because That's they right. finally saw that the polls that people wanted to be free. He sat there and tried to lock us down from the beginning. He's the one that kept our kids virtual. He's the one that kept masks on. For him now to say freedom has won, Everybody knows that he's the one that took freedom away from us. Everyone knows that he's the one that caused the shutdown to close small businesses and to keep us in our homes. You know the frustration that you had personally to try to get the Europeans to understand the threat of Russia. But you know what I believe happened? The people of Germany, the people of France, the people of, of Britain, they're the ones, 40 uh, rallies here in America, they're the ones who said, with 500,000 people in Berlin and said, you better do something for the Ukrainians. That woke them up. Biden's disapproval ratings woke him up. And that's why you got the speech that you want. The problem is with that speech, he didn't say how he was going to fix anything. Right. He recited a bunch of Republican talking points, but he didn't say how he would fix it. We have the solutions. We've done them before. We can do them again. 
I don't know what he expects is going to happen, but nobody's going to buy that. Well, they don't have much time over there. Just real quick, uh, it looks like private industry is doing something when it comes to oil. A Texas refining company is no longer going to refine Russian oil. In Sweden and Finland, their leading refineries have stopped all purchases, Canada. as well as in Canada. Uh, they did that on their own as a government, but these are private industries, yeah. and refineries are barking around the world. Even China had slowed down, is not picking up the pace they thought on purchasing Russian oil. Again, private industry and the people are telling their governments that this carnage cannot stand in the Ukraine. But Brian, Brian the thing is, America's still taking Russian oil. Why didn't he mention that? On top of that, can I just say, as the wife of a combat veteran, how do you not mention the 13 soldiers that we lost in mm -hmm. Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. How do you Great act point. like that Some didn't Republicans happen? Were yelling 13, thir right? I mean, that it's it's unthinkable that you would not acknowledge those soldiers that we lost. Everything about this speech was tone deaf and wrong and just a sign of they ticked off all the disapprovals that he had and he attempted to try and make it right. Well, it's an election year. I think that's why he was saying secure the border. That's why he was saying buy American. He's, do, he's not doing either one of those, but he's trying to suggest that he is. He's telling us to do that, but he's not doing it himself. But yeah. election year. Uh, can you, Governor, can you, can you just last thing, just can you, if Donald Trump had left Afghanistan the way he did, if Donald Trump allowed Russia to carve up Ukraine the way we're seeing right now, how would the press be handling that compared to this? Well, first of all, it didn't happen during President Trump's administration because he prevented war. Putin could have done this during Trump, but Putin was too scared of Trump to do it. The idea that they did it was they smelled blood in the water. You know, they watched Afghanistan fall and us leave our allies. They watched him wave Nord Stream 2. They watched the fact that he talked about a minor incursion. They watched him, by the way, fall all over himself to get into the Iran deal. And if he continues to negotiate with Russia and China, Somebody. those are two of our biggest enemies. They should not be in a room with our enemies are, negotiating any deal whatsoever. It is a fireable offense if he continues these talks. Well, we appreciate you staying up late last night to watch the State of the Union and getting up early to be with us today. Always great to be with you. Great Thank you very much. Thank you.